Very good evening to you, students, once again, and welcome to part two of this lecture on unit three, lesson planning. So in the first session, we covered um, the pre-interactive phase of a lesson, which has to do with um, the planning. And under the planning, we talked about routine information, you know, um, why is important to source for information, how and where to source for information, the relevance of CAPS documents, the test book. We also covered um, the value of lesson planning. We talked about why we plan lesson. We use the similar um, traveling, you know, or taking learners from one point to the other to describe a lesson plan. In the next unit, we are going to delve more into um, different aspects of a lesson plan with specific emphasis on learning objectives or lesson objectives. Okay, so welcome to part two and let's get started. I'll share my screen in a bit. All right, so like we have talked about, I spoke about earlier, um, for each lesson you plan, you must ensure that there is constructive alignment. And I describe constructive alignment as the link between um, your learning objectives, the assessment, and the content, oh, sorry, and the assessments, you know, and the content you are going to cover. Okay, so you have to think about the objective of the lesson, first of all, and make sure that the objective is reflected in the assessment you have given the learners. Also, you need to ensure that the content you have covered is what you are going to assess. Okay, so learning objectives in some um, institutions, they are referred to as lesson outcomes. You know, um, whichever one you call it has to do with what you would want the learners to take away from the lesson you have covered, what you want them to achieve after you have taught them a lesson. Okay, so for each lesson you teach, I mean a single lesson this time, there has to be certain objective set for that particular lesson. So at the end of the one hour you have spent with the learners, this is what you think, what you desire learners to be able to do based on the knowledge they have gathered from that lesson. It could be in the form of skills they have developed from that lesson. It also could be in the form of values which they have developed from that lesson. So your learning objective, um, you know, is, is, is um, captured in the form of knowledge, in the form of skill, and the, in the form of value. Okay, so, and these learning objectives are in line with Bloom's taxonomy, um, levels of cognitive demand. Okay, so there are three major domains when it comes to your learning objectives, and these are in line with um, your Bloom's taxonomy. So you have your cognitive um, domain. Your cognitive domain is linked with skill. Okay, so it has to do with mental skills. What learners will be able to um, what knowledge they would have acquired at the end of that lesson. So this has to do with, I beg your pardon. This has to do with, um, you know, knowledge component. How I usually describe the knowledge aspect or the cognitive demand is I call it the heads on, you know, things learners will be able to grasp things they will be able to recall, things they will be able to, you know, have um kind of understanding on. These are lower order type of, um, you know, um cognitive demand when you look at the Bloom's taxonomy, which we'll look at a little bit later, okay? So moving away from your knowledge objectives, you go into your psychomotor. Your psychomotor domain has to do with the skills learners will be able to acquire at the completion of your lesson. So at the end of the lesson, learners will be able to construct, learners will be able to design, learners will be able to critically analyze, learners will be able, you know, so those kind of skills 
we refer to them most of the time as hands-on. What learners, anyway, if you're teaching things like technology, natural science, engineering, graphics, and design, and all of those things. So some of the skills learners will be able to complete, you know, be able to know how to do something, doing, okay? The psychomotor domain. Remember, the cognitive domain is they'll be able to, you know, be able to record, they'll be able to have, you know, so it has to be with heads on, okay? Hands on, the psychomotor demand, that is the skill. Then you have the affective domain, which has to do with development of certain type of um, attitudes or values. So learners will develop awareness. Learners will develop appreciation of something. Okay, so this has to do with what I refer to as hats on. So that's how I always differentiate or explain the learning objectives in the form of knowledge, skills, and values. All right? So your affective domain has to do with growth in feelings or emotional areas, things like attitude, things like values. Learners will be able to have a change in, you know, uh, in the attitude towards um, the environment, for instance, if you finish teaching a lesson on climate change, so their attitude or the level of awareness they have when it comes to conservation of um, resources will change. That's the value. Okay, so your learning objectives are split into three, your knowledge, your skills, and your values. We'll talk a little more for that on the learning objectives as we go along. Right, so when you articulate your learning objective, it's important that you use um, you use active verbs. I'm going to talk about the, the writing a little bit more, why your learning objectives should be smart, okay? So here are some examples. Um, learners will be able to identify different types of pollution. I beg your pardon, please. So if you teach a lesson on pollution, for instance, so some of your objectives, or so one of your objectives could be learners will be able to identify. So if you have taught them different types of pollution, water pollution, you play a video for them, okay? Or you take them to a site where um, there has been, water has been contaminated and fishes are dying and all of those things. They will be able to identify it if you, are, if you had taught, taught them that topic, all right? So, the, that that has to do with the cognitive demand. They will be able to identify because they have developed knowledge of the content or the concept pollution. They will be able to design a plan of action to reduce pollution in the atmosphere, okay? This also links with the cognitive domain. You can also argue that this um, relates to the um, psychomotor domain because when they are designing a plan of action, they could involve them um, coming up with poster presentation of you know what they want to do and all of that. They will be able to create a digital poster. Okay, so this is now they are creating something. Okay, they are using their skills to create a digital poster on the effects of pollution on the state of health of humankind. Lastly, they will develop an awareness around global warning. You see, I have highlight, I've highlighted the key terms here, identify, design, create. With the knowledge and the, um, and the skill outcomes, you must at all times use action verbs. I'm going to discuss or touch on that a little bit more in the next slides, okay? So with the value outcomes, this is a little bit difficult. It's always a tricky one for you to measure because sometimes you might not notice instantly in the classroom after um, one hour, for instance, if learners have achieved or you know this outcome in terms of the value outcome now. Okay, if you say learners would develop an appreciation for water conversation, sorry, water conservation, you might not be able to observe that or 
you know, experience that or watch them, you know, um, put that, you know, achievement into practice instantly. But over time, you will notice that learners' attitude towards water, if before they didn't care about putting off the tap when they go to the loo, for instance, then they will begin to change. They will put off the tap. So at, in, these are um, the, the, the value outcomes take a little bit of time to, to, to um, come into realization or into reality or into practice. But over time, you will notice that there has been, something has happened internally. That's why it's called the heart. That's why I describe it as a heart on. Okay, so it is the affective domain. All right. So the, the other outcomes, which has to do with knowledge, that is the cognitive demand, domain. You know, if you ask the nurse to identify based on these um, three pictures, which one is related to water pollution and which one relates to, for instance, um, environmental pollution or, you know, other forms of pollution, they will be able to look at the pictures and they will be able to identify it. Okay. Excuse me, please. If you ask them to design a plan of action, you know, to reduce that, they'll be able to design it and present a plan of action for you. Right. So um, still on learning objectives, I have provided you with some examples here. Also, let's say you teach a topic on speed seed dispersal. And then these are some examples, you know, you can begin to think about. Also, take note that I have put the keywords in bold just to help you, you know, uh, make sense of how you articulate or how you write your own learning objectives. So example here, I say learners will be able to describe three different types of seeds. So if they see you place three different types of seeds before the learners, after teaching them a lesson on seed dispersal, they were able to describe that this type of seed, you know, this is what makes it different, or this is the type of fruit fruit, sorry, this seed will produce or this veg, um, or vegetable this seed will produce, you know, it belongs to this family or this class of fruit and all of that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So they will be able to describe it by looking at it because you have covered that in your lesson and you can now assess them based on that knowledge they have acquired. Okay, the next one is explanation. They'll be able to explain why seed dispersal is important for plants. I really beg your pardon on this, sorry. They'll be able to explain why seed dispersal is important for plants. Because you have covered that content, they have gained knowledge of it, they will be able to explain it. And you can listen to their explanation and then you will be able to you know, um, judge if they had got the explanation correctly or incorrectly. In terms of skills, learners will be able to collect. So if you then ask them to, you know, collect different types of seeds, they can actually go into the bushes or go within the environment and they collect different types of seed. They physically collect those seeds. And you'll be able to measure if they collected the correct ones or not. So it has to be measurable then they will be able to draw and label a particular seed or a particular seed, for instance. So they look at different seeds and ask them to drive, draw a particular one and they'll be able to do it. You see? So pay close attention to the keywords we have used here for each of the domains or each of the um, each of the objective types, whether it's knowledge or skill or value. Then in terms of value, like I have said, also a change in attitude occur, a change in value occur. Learners will be able to develop an environmental awareness. Learners will be able to appreciate the necessity of planning indigenous gardens, which allows seed dispersal to become part of sustainable ecosystem. Can you see, you might not be able to measure this value objectives right there and then in the classroom. Over time, learners will develop, they will appreciate why it's important to have indigenous garden. They will develop an awareness, or, you know, concerning the environment, the changes that happen within the heart, 
by the time you finish teaching a particular topic. With the other two, you'll be able to measure it instantly because if you ask them in one of your assessment, whether formal or informal, I say, all right, describe three types of seed dispersal based on our topic today. Learners will be able to describe it and you will know there and then if they got it correctly or not. If you ask them, explain the importance of seed dispersal in the ecosystem. You will listen, then explain. You will be able to measure it. It is specific. You get what I'm trying to say? The same with the skills outcome. This is where students always miss it. And this is partly why I said it's best to record this. Okay, so let's take careful note here. Look at the keywords I have used. Describe, explain, collect, draw. These are active verbs. All right. So these are some of the criteria for describe um, for coming up with your own learning objectives. Okay. First of all, you need to look at the CAPS document and check what the objectives are for that lesson or that topic in CAPS document. And make sure that what you are going to be teaching or your objectives are linked to the specific objectives for the topic in the CAPS document. All right. So... I beg your pardon, use action verbs. I have provided examples here. Learners will be able to list, learners will be able to differentiate, learners will be able to identify, learners will be able to create, learners will be able to define, learners will be able to draw. These are all action verbs. You cannot include something like learners will be able to understand because you cannot measure if they understand. You cannot assess that knowledge. You cannot say learners will be able to learn because you cannot measure it. You cannot assess it. But if you say learners will be able to list, then you can ask them, can you list different provinces in South Africa? They raise their hands, they list the provinces, you list them. If you say learners will be able to understand different provinces in South Africa, you cannot measure that understanding. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Okay. If you say learners will be able to identify um, which um, province have, um, let's say, the highest amount of um, gold, for instance, in South Africa or whatever, you know, you've covered that, they will be able to identify that. If you say learners will be able to create a poster or a chart or something, you give them an activity to do and they do that. If you say learners will be able to learn, you won't be able to measure that. It is not specific. It is not measurable. Okay. All right, so um, verbs such as learn, understand, cannot be measured. That's what why I have kept it here. Your learning objectives must be achievable. So it's not possible for you to have a lesson of um, 45 minutes or one hour and you have 12 objectives. It's not realistic. You won't be able to achieve, you know, um, those objectives are not achievable within a single lesson. So these are some of the things you have to put in mind each time you articulate your lesson objectives. And I'll also explain a little bit more as we go along. All right, my apologies students. Um, I had a little bit with my network at home, but I will, I will carry on with the recording. All right, so I was talking about the learning objectives and I indicated that, you know, your learning objectives must be clear and you must use action verbs. So these are some of the criteria um, which criteria, sorry, you which you must have at the back of your mind when you articulate your learning objectives. The learning objectives must be smart. Must be smart in the sense that it has to be specific, 
it has to be very clear objectives or outcomes. It has to be measurable. It has to be achievable. It has to be relevant and it has to be time bound. In terms of measurable, I have given you guys a couple of examples. If you say learners will be able to list or learners will be able to um, design or learners will be able to create, you will be able to measure that if learners have done that in your classroom. Okay, but if you say learners will be able to learn or understand, it's difficult for you to measure such objectives. Okay, it has to be achievable also, like I've indicated. Is the learning or is the level of learning achievable in right. one semester, for instance, or in one lesson? So you need to think about what amount of information you are giving, and then you think about if it's possible to be done within one lesson. Okay, it has to be relevant. Okay, is it is it relevant to um the topic, obviously, because you have seen a topic, then you come up with learning objectives for that topic. So is it relevant, you know, for the discipline, for the topic you are teaching and all of that? And again, last but not the least, it has to be time bound. OK, so you are teaching a 45 minutes lesson, for instance, and you have decided to give um 10 different learning objectives. It's not possible for learners to be able to cover all of that and make sense of them, you know, and be able to develop knowledge and skills plus value for those 10 objectives in one lesson. It's not realistic at all. It's not. Okay, so these are some of the criteria you have at the back of your mind as you think about your learning objectives. Your learning objectives, I need to point out, is also linked to Bloom's taxonomy. So the Bloom's taxonomy, I'm sure you're going to be covering this in some of other discipline. It's like this pyramid. It has to do with the level of cognitive demand. Okay, so the level of thinking of, of learners. We always say you move learners or learning um, from the unknown to from, sorry, from the known rather to the unknown. Okay, so you, you start from the lowest level of of, of, of cognition when you are teaching learner, okay? So um, your questions then has to do with um, the basic form of lesson at the, the last level of this pyramid, okay? So you ask Carfordin, remember, you are taking learners from the known to the unknown. Progressively, you move them you move them upward. So when you ask questions on that the, the last level, it has to be questions that they will be able to remember. Okay, I use keywords like learners for them to define, to list and all of that. Remember that some of these um, I, um, verbs here are not active verbs, but it just explains Bloom's taxonomy, okay. Then your next level is understanding, okay? After remembering, so these are not just things you teach them. When you, 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 you teach a topic, for instance, um, states or provinces in South Africa, for instance, and you ask them which province um, has and the highest population in South Africa, for instance, and they could just remember and they say, okay, South Africa, oh, I'm sorry, KwaZulu Natal, for instance, okay? Or you ask them which province is regarded as the, um, you know, which province can do, um, is, is um, Johannesburg located? They will remember it. You get what I'm saying? They remember, they recall, and they give you an answer. Then from there, you move them to understanding. So they don't just record, they make sense. They do understand what you are teaching, and then they are able to answer to questions. They will be able to explain ideas or a concept because they have an understanding, you know, they make sense of that, okay? Then in terms of application now, so when they can remember and they understand, they'll be able to apply that knowledge in new context. So if you move that question around, they will still be able to apply, you know, what you have taught them in that question, okay? They'll be able to analyze, which is the fourth level. You can, so the questions you ask in, at this level has to do with questions that learners will be able to, you know, draw conclusions or draw connections 
about among different ideas. Okay, you ask them to um, look at um, a case study, for instance, and analyze it and answer some questions based on, based on that. Okay. Then evaluation also um, is where they now begin to um, take a stand or make a decision based on something that have been presented to them. You ask them to critique something, to um, analyze the situation, to, you know, to make a case for something, to judge or to select or something like that. Then lastly, you have your create. Create is the highest level of cognitive demand. So this is where you give them a project, for instance, to, to complete based on a scenario, for instance. Okay, you can also ask them to formulate something, to do an investigation and all of that. So the type of questions you ask is important in the lesson and you have to cover all levels, okay? Which must be in line with your learning objectives. You see now how all of these things are tied together constructive alignment remember okay so um planning for constructive alignment um this is another example so you, we have provided you here with learning objectives and the type of activities you could do and how you could assess some of those activities. Remember what we said about constructive alignment before, that it has to be alignment between the learning objectives, the activities or the content, and then the assessment. All of this has to speak to each other. So here is an example of um, the learning objective, distinguish between different kinds of advertisement. So in terms of activity now, Learners select different kinds of ads from newspaper, magazine, cut out and paste on poster or paper, then differentiate dif between different kinds of ads. So this is what you have said learners will be able to do at the end of the learners. Then you design an activity in the lesson that gives them opportunity to put into practice or to develop you know, um, that particular knowledge then in assessment now, you give them an assessment. So this could be an informal observation-based assessment, you know, on that particular activity they have completed. Okay. So you design a question that has to do with um, advertisement, okay? You could, you know, ask the learners a question on, you know, to put a poster together based on the advert, or you could ask them a question, you know, to identify, you know, um, different kind of ads available in that newspaper and, you know, and which category they belong to, for instance, and justify their responses. So you have, you know, set out an objective, you have designed an activity or content to be able to um, teach that objective, then you have assessed the same objective, you know, consistency and alignment across board. Right, so these are all but examples. Um, I'm not going to label more on this. Um, when you get the slides, obviously you have a detailed look at them and you could see the alignment between these three. Okay. Right. So these are some assessment terminologies. I have included them here. Um, forms of assessment is either we have a formal assessment or informal assessment in the lesson. So informally, the teacher could ask the learners questions why he or she is teaching the lesson. This is not for marks. Basically, you're just trying to adapt to check if the learners are following and then you move on. OK, then you have your formal assessment also. Um, which is regarded as assessment of learning, which is where you test now if the learners made sense of the topic you have taught. This could be a test, formal test. It could be an assignment for learners to complete. It could be an examination. The assessment for learning is where you, um, is usually where you um, test the learners to see their prior knowledge of the topic or to see if they are following based on what you are teaching, okay? So you want to know if you have to re-explain and all of that, right? So the assessment approaches, which are the different methods of assessment we have, you could do an observation, 
could ask, give learner set tests, you could give them a project, oral presentation, case study, group presentation, different methods of assessment at the end of the day. So, but then you need to decide if this is going to be a formal or informal one. Okay, so obviously if you give them an assignment, it's no longer informal assessment because they have to submit an assignment and there is a mark attached to it. But if it's just an observation, okay, yes, that could be informal assessment, right? And um, case study analysis could also be an informal assessment in a lesson. So we can use different tools. So I'm sure by the time you look at the lesson plan template, which you have now, you will be able to make sense of all of this. So this could be a rubric, it could be observation schedule, it could be investigative investigation schedule, worksheet, it could be a poster presentation or different tools we can use for um, assessment in the classroom. Okay. So that is it also for part two of this unit three, lesson planning. And we are going now to do the last unit, I'm sorry, the last part for this unit, which will be part three. And I, I hope um, I'm still with you guys. Thank you very much. And I'll see you briefly now in part three.